sir. Yeah. Uh, Bob, Mr. President. Yeah. I apologize for calling when you're down there, but uh, I wanted to ask your advice. You asked Joe Califano to have Joe Fowler and others of us meet this morning, which we're going to do about 11.30 on the problem of taxes, tax increases, inflation, etc. Uh, I haven't disclosed to anybody the possible increases in obligation authority and expenditures for fiscal 67 that might result if this Vietnamese effort continues beyond June of 67, which is one of the fundamental assumptions in our 67 budget, or if it continues to build up at the present rate to 400,000 and so on, or if our aircraft losses and ammunition expenditures and some of these other things continue at these really fantastic levels. We lost 44 planes, for example, in the month of April, and each one of those planes costs a couple of million dollars. We dropped the uh, 50,000 tons of bombs. Each bomb costs about a dollar a pound. It's, it's unbelievably expensive. Uh, and I've just been making some very rough estimates of what this all might lead to in, in uh, fiscal 67. And it looks to me, and this is the roughest kind of estimate, uh, it might require 14 billion more obligation authority above the level that we went in with in January for fiscal 67, which in turn might lead expenditures to be nine billion higher than we estimated. You remember that that we estimated fifty eight point three billion for your sixty seven budget. Now we knew at the time that, that was a couple of billion light even on the then existing plan. And now we take account of the higher levels and the rising expenditures of ammunition planes and so on and the need for rotation of these much higher levels of troops. All this adds up to let's say maybe a seven billion expenditure level above the two billion we were short for maybe nine billion above the forecast. I, I'm reluctant to even mention these figures to such people as Joe Fowler and Gardner, close mouthed as they are, for fear that they'll leak a little, and if they do just sure as hell, your great society program's in trouble. On the other hand, if I don't mention them, I don't know how they can intelligently advise you on what they think ought to be done here this summer. My own personal view still is, as I related it to you before, we ought to try to squeeze by the summer without a tax increase and without a supplement and hope that between the summer and January, we would see the Southeast Asia operation more clearly, and we would also see the economy more clearly. But I didn't want to hold anything back from your key advisors if you thought I should mention it to them. Well, it's a very difficult one. What I have thought is this, that uh, we estimated we'd have a deficit of one eight that we will likely miss that uh, by 2-2 two, two anyway on our part on sales of assets uh, which will not bring what we think or uh, <clears throat> we will not get authority to do it and so forth. I would say that we, a conservative figure to go in with would be four. As a matter of fact, I did it uh, uh, better than I thought I would because uh, I, I wouldn't have was, wouldn't have been too surprised if it hit five or six. I was just hoping if I could keep it low, I could get my great society authorized, uh, like the rent control, rent supplement, and teachers' corps, and all these things that are so new and fresh. Uh, we can't do that because the liberals are really not supporting them. You don't get any enthusiasm or do or die attitude from uh, organizations like. Uh, Martin Luther King and the Roy Wilkins group and the labor groups and... And the leaders are the Congress aren't helping that, That's right. If uh, Rebikoff had much rather make a speech on... Safety. ...on the uh, U.N. or something and, uh, and tell us how to run that, try to get a headline, they really don't, uh, don't have the enthusiasm for these new things. So, that will be four. Now then, uh, with the rivers is and and uh, the Morrises and uh, the Fogarty's on health and education on what we've already authorized. I'm not talking about uh, uh, their new society, but they're not, uh, the, they've already, I got them through last year uh, and the year before. My guess is that they will hit a minimum of five, four anyway, say four. So that's another four. So that gets you eight. Well, that, that second four, Mr. President, will probably be 
obligation authority, but surely not expenditures. Well, uh, I don't know. They say they're going to put in 600 million more on education under elementary. They added uh, 500 million more on expenditures and health and education in this appropriation bill. Uh, they have already added a good deal of it. GI bills, 300 million. Uh, that we've already signed. Uh, the pay raises will be nearly uh, oh, up, oh, almost a billion. So it's not far off. The last figure I saw, the expenditures would run better than three, between three and four, and that was before they talk, started talking to me about the estimates that Morris was going to put in. And uh, I would... Uh, Imagine that uh, as they go along, they'll try to cut a little bit on foreign aid and stuff. But uh, anyway, say three or four. There's three fours roughly as I have visualized it in my own mind. Four for us, four for the Congress, and four for you. That's what I thought you would finally get up to. I thought you'd be off two to start with, and you'd misjudge two, or the need would be two. Now, that... That I have thought. Now the question is whether we could uh, keep that under his deficit and maybe get by till January. Eisenhower had a 12 and a half one, and, and we've always just had a rule of thumb that we never go in that above that because that would really be capitulation. We'd just have to throw in the towel, not even run, if we had a bigger deficit than he did. So I have hoped that, uh, say, June the 15th, I believe the Congress will be there the 1st September, but June the 15th that I could call all the folks together and say, now here's the next two weeks and here's the way it's going to wind up as we see it. Now, what can you do? What will you do here on taxes? And talk to Mills and, and Long and a few who have their feet absolutely in concrete now. My judgment is if I indicated that I was going to have to have taxes, and I should have taxes, like Martin is publicly, and like uh, uh, Gardner is privately. My judgment is that that will drive Mills and Long to a position that's irrevocable, that will make them as much in concrete to, against a tax bill as uh, they are now against a rent supplement. Yeah. Uh, if they can see these figures and business can see these figures in June and we have the appropriation bills pretty well behind us and the Congress has taken the initiative in busting the budget, not you, yeah. not me, yeah. not the, uh, the bureaucrats, but they have come through with a four billion one big and they have refused to give us the authority we need to sell securities then I would think we'd have a better position say, all right, fellas, you've, you've t looked at it a different way. Uh, I didn't want to go this way, but here it is. Now, what do you think we ought to do? I think then they would say, we don't believe we ought to go home with this big a deficit. Now, uh, I don't know, I don't know uh, these little economic things that come out with us one-tenth of a percent one way or the other. Uh, I don't know. I look at our prices here, and we got a lot of soft stuff. Our mohair is very soft. Our hogs are way down from 30 to 22. Our cattle, nobody will buy a calf. They're just nobody. Now, that, that's dangerous business. When, uh, this, when their market is 28 cents, and you contract them for August delivery normally, and you can't get a guy to contract. Now, we're delivering our sheep today, our lambs. I'm going over and ship them on the train in the next two hours. I'm selling 500. Uh, I sold them at 25.75 per pound. They weigh 100 pounds, so that's $25. Uh, three months ago, for delivery, between the 1st and 15th of May, they weigh about 100 pounds. I bought them at 60 pounds, and I put 40 pounds on them. But they have dropped in the last 30, 40 days from 25.75 that I'd contracted three months ago down to about 21 or 2. Uh, so that, there's your lamb. There's your calves. There's your pork. There's your wool mohair. Now, I don't know what other things. 
But uh, uh, Saragusa of Admiral said yesterday he's working on a Chicago meeting for us. And he says that the only product that he sells that's not soft, that's not clogging up on him, is color TV. He says that all the other lines of everything they have in the way of uh, kitchen stuff and radios and other things are just not moving. Uh, the little business people up and down the avenue, we have eight salesmen. The Main Street in Austin, it's a quarter million population. And uh, they're really, roughly, we have 300 accounts. 200 of them are not buying anything. Won't even advertise what they got. Just say that things are awful slow. They got to hold in. They got to tighten their belt. Now, I don't believe that's general, but that is enough for me to say I'm not don't have to jump from May 15th to June 15th. And I want to see. Now, I I think what will be disastrous for us is if we demand a, pro, a wage increase like Martin. I mean, a, a tax bill like Martin's demanding just a fool popping off his mouth, and I wish that Martin and Gardner both quit talking so much. Uh, if we demand it and don't get it, that's about as bad as we can go into the election with. Yeah. We have neither the, the effects of it or the leadership. Yeah. And uh, whatever else you think, we must not admit it. We must not even feel it in our own minds. But uh, we're not going to get much out of the Congress. We didn't get the first six months. And you can just be sure you're going to get static. Now, what we have, the danger we have, is if we lose the Congress, as we could very well, uh, then the next two years, as we go into the election, they'll tear the Democratic Party wide open, and it will be in much worse shape than it was when Stevenson took it at uh, 52 for the 68 election. Now, they don't understand that, and they, they, they are all talking about 72, but this fight's not 72, this is 68. Nobody, they don't fool me. And uh, our people are not just, the liberals are, are not prudent folks, and they don't, they don't evaluate carefully, and they don't see that. But you can't have Fulbright, and Ribicoff, and Bobby Kennedy, and Teddy Kennedy, and Mike Mansfield, and everybody, Russell Long will have a new viewpoint, going in opposite directions and have a compact, unified group. Now, uh, we would have been defeated, in my judgment, in 64, uh, largely because that's what we did have. Nobody would, uh, would cohese. Uh, during the 61, 62, 63 period, really what we got through primarily was test ban and Peace Corps. We got none of the big substantive important things we needed, immigration and, and school bill and uh, uh, Medicare and all those things. Now, we did get them through six months. So I would say, back to your original question, that I just wouldn't make my calculations. I would say to these people, that uh, you can't tell, and no one can tell right now, that Hoover had a mighty good period in 29. Everything was wonderful. But then the stock market started going off, and things started getting soft. And before he knew it, uh, by 30, he was in trouble. And by 31, he's in a hell of a shape. Now, uh, you don't think that's going to happen at all. But if we misguessed this thing, and if we took eight, ten billion out in taxes, and if uh, something happened in the war that gave you a break, uh, you could have thrown this country into something right quick. And therefore, you think you better prudently look at it and see uh, what effects you get from your bombing between now and June the 15th. You better see what the Congress does. You can't tell what they're going to do in these appropriations. If they cut us $4 billion, that would be good. If they go over four billion, that's another action, and you can't tell whether it's going to be under four or over four. They say it's going to be under four. Tell them you think the president thinks it'll be over four, or be nearer four plus than four minus. That's a fair thing. I think that you'd say that you could easily uh, uh, run uh, uh, four or better, 
but that January, February, March, uh, uh, you have uh, missed it by a billion dollars, if that's correct. I think January, February, you even over 700 in March. Uh, I don't know what you do in April. Well, we're going to hit it for the, I just... Yeah, I know, but I uh, mean just to... Uh, You're quite right in that. Uh, then I think uh, you'd get them to watch in the Congress, transfer the gossip and the heat up there, right. where they say it's going to depend on what you do, what we do. Uh, it's not McNamara made a fool mistake, and it's not Johnson, and it's not uh, us uh, indecision. Yeah. It's us waiting to see what you do. If you make a net change of $8 billion, uh, if Congress cuts it for... That's all right. If they raise it for, that's eight billion difference. And the eight billion difference can really determine what we do. That's my thinking. And then the sale of assets, that's got a good deal to do with it. Uh, we, we plan to sell 4.7 billion. Now, assume the market got tight and we couldn't do it. And assume we didn't get the authority and we haven't got a rule on the bill yet. That 4.7 that we count, 